So the sliders that we're talking about today, they are probably, they're not necessarily a hidden panel, but they are more or less a very underused panel. And they are kind of like the underlying DNA of all photos. Because what are all photos made of? They're made of colors. Well, light, and then in turn, colors. But what are those colors made of? R, G, B, red, green, and blue. So today we're talking about the calibration sliders, which are only available in Lightroom Classic. If you're looking at your screen going, why does my Lightroom look differently than Will's? You're probably using Lightroom CC, which is the cloud-based version of Lightroom, not the desktop version of Lightroom. If you don't know which one's which, check out this video. I can never remember which side is gonna pop up, but I'll also link it in the description of the video. But the calibration panel, or the DNA of your photo editing, can be quite confusing, and a lot of photographers tend to skip it, even though it's probably, if not the most powerful editing panel, as it sets the entire tone, the entire base level of your photos. So with that, let's get into the video. My name is Will, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over, that's right, the calibration panel. Now, what is the calibration panel? Well, here we are in Lightroom, and let's look at our right side here, and you'll notice at the very bottom, it says calibration. If you do not see that, right click on any of these here and go to customize develop mode, develop panel, not mode, and then go down here and make sure calibration is checked. If it isn't checked, well, make sure it's checked, and then press save and it should pop up. Now, what is your calibration? You'll notice that I have red, green, and blue here set. So a very quick understanding of this panel is every single color in your image is composed of a percentage of red, greens, and blues. When you hover your cursor over you know, the colors in your image, you'll notice at the histogram, it'll show percentages of red, greens, and blues. Now this is showing you what that photo is composed of, what parts of the colors are in that photo. And in this case, right on her skin tones, you're looking at 51 red, 44 green, and 37 blue. There's majority red, followed by some more green, and then a little bit of a touch of blue in there. So you can kind of understand what colors make up the color that she, her skin tone is. So let's go to my original image here, where you can see that these are clearly red, green, blue. Now, as you can see, red primary, green primary, blue primary. As you adjust these sliders, you're not necessarily adjusting like the HSL tab. You're not going in there and adjusting the red. If I was to go into here, into the color mixer, go to the saturation and drop the red, the only thing that affects is the red, as you can see. Now, let's reset that if I do the greens. The greens is the only thing that's affected. If I do the blues, only the blues is affected, right? So that is the HSL. This is affecting the individual color individually. The color calibration affects all the red pixels, all the green pixels, and all the blue pixels. Now, since every color is composed of reds, greens, and blues, when you adjust your red primary, you're adjust adjusting all the red pixels. When you adjust your blue primary, all the blue pixels. And when you adjust your green primary, all the green pixels, you get the idea. So if I go here to adjust the red saturation, notice how all three fade. If I adjust the green saturation, all three fade. If I adjust the blue saturation, all three fade. If I adjust the hues, they change. The blue changes mostly, the green also changes, and the red changes. If I change the green hue, the green primarily changes, but look, the blue really changes and the red changes. Same with the red. So you're adjusting every single pixel. Now this is very important, but also very complex at the same time, which is why a lot of people don't use it because they don't fully understand it. But let's go into some actual photo examples so you can see what's occurring. Because using this tool actually allows you to really give cool effects to your photos. And if you're not using it properly or at all, you could be missing out on a very, very amazing color edit that you didn't even know existed or one that you've been trying to get and just can't seem to figure out how to do it. Here's our first photo and we're gonna go ahead and reset it and then crop in so we don't have this person's random head in the, in the bottom of the photo. And what we're gonna do is go to the calibration. Now, let's say, and this is very popular with landscape photos, this is very popular in the movie industry, is the orange and teal look. Now, the calibration, if you haven't figured that out, is the best place to get that look. Because if you take the blue primary and shift it to the left, it turns all the blues to kind of teal and all the oranges to more orange. So immediately, if you look at this, 
before, after, before, after. Huge difference. And honestly, you could just be like, I'm done. You, you wouldn't, but you can see the intensity of the change just by moving one slider. Nothing else has been changed. Nothing in the basic panel other than the white balance has been tweaked already, but that's it. Now, if we wanted to do the saturation, we could up the saturation, make it super intense. And I'm sure you've seen photos on Instagram that look just like this. It's a very easy way to edit and get a really dramatic, intense look. So then let's say we wanted to do some green, some balancing out. Well, if you adjust the green slider, you're pulling the green out of the images. Now, if you recall, let's, let's hover over our blue and look in our histogram. See how it says 50%, 56% red, 68% green, and 80% blue. So there's actually a lot of green in this photo. So if we adjust the saturation, we adjust quite a bit of the blues. But if we adjust the reds, we don't adjust as much, but we still pull out some of the color. Now, if we were to adjust the green primary, you're not gonna see that much of a difference. More intensity there, bringing it more towards the, the brownish tones. If we go the other way, we kind of get more red in the image, a little bit paler on the greens. Uh, but you can kind of see what's happening. If we do the red, to the left, you kind of get a weird looking color. I wouldn't necessarily go that way. And if you go into the right, you get more intensity and you notice how the colors kind of contrast a little bit more because you're putting more orange into the red. So it's gonna contrast against the blues more. So you can create contrast in the DNA of the photos before you've even created contrast. So that's pretty cool. And that gives you a lot of playability here. Now, if you look here, you'll notice there's one more slider at the top and that is shadows. This allows you to put green in the shadows, like tint it green or tint it magenta, which can be really, really good because you can add more contrast there or balance your underlying tones of your image with the image as a whole, just by tweaking the shadows. Now let's go to a portrait really quick and I'll show you how this works with those. Here's our portrait that we're gonna do. And one of the greatest things about calibration is the ability to really match and blend skin tones using the red and green primaries, even far and beyond above what you can use with the HSL. Like if you're having trouble with skin tones, you'll find that you can use the calibration to really dial in those edits. First thing we're gonna do is actually a few basic edits here. We're gonna bring down the highlights, up the shadows, and set our white and black point just for a, just to get some detail back. And then we're gonna bring, bring it back up. That way we can really see her, right? So now we can see her. And then we're gonna go down to our calibration and we're gonna tweak it to make the skin tones look really good. They already look pretty, pretty damn good. But if we were to tweak the red primary, we could get them a little bit more orangey, bring them, bring some intensity back to them. And then we can do the green and kind of bring in some red to them right there and drop down the saturation and we get almost perfect skin tones. I mean, look at this. This looks so smooth right here. It's before, after. You see how it just puts in a richness in her skin. It brings it alive. Now you could go crazy and you could just like, you know, make her yellow, which this isn't the Simpsons. Yes, that might be my last name, but this isn't the Simpsons episode here. We're not trying to make everybody yellow. <laughs> or you can do the green primary and just, you know, really shift them crazy. Even that looked pretty good, but that's still a little intense. However, this is a really cool way once you dial it in to fine tune all of your skin tones. If you've been having trouble there, this might be where you can go to really get those locked in and make your skin tones pop with that rich, vibrant color. Now, uh, a warning to the wise, the calibration tool can easily be overdone. I, I mean, you could just simply take this blue primary and s slam it to the left, and you might be like, oh, that's the look I'm going for. No, it is not. Be gentle with this slider. These are very powerful sliders. And remember, they affect every single color in your image. They're not the HSL, they're not the color grade, they're not white balance. They are determining your entire base. It is the foundation of your images. So if you overdo your calibration, you'll find that later on when you're editing, you're like, why are my images looking so weird? And it simply could be because you overdid your calibration. So find tweaks, find touches, and adjust as needed. That is my word of my, my warning to the my wise warning to the world. One of whatever that phrase is. Let me know in the comments if you know what that actual phrase is. This is just a very basic overview of the calibration tool. 
But if you really want to master your editing, if you really want to become the best editor that you possibly can be, I have an amazing Lightroom Master of Editing course that I have been working on and I'm still working on because I'm continually adding lessons to the course which covers everything you need to know about editing in Lightroom. It covers all the basic panels, it goes over full edits, it goes over tips, tricks, hotkeys, things you didn't know existed in Lightroom, including a ton of free resources, including presets, downloads, skin retouching, all those things, free resources. You get a ton of raws to edit along with me. But let me tell you, if you really want to get into Lightroom and make it your, yeah, then go ahead and check out it in the description. I will link it down there, but it is my Lightroom Master of Editing course and it is amazing. But if you're noticing that your images are feeling kind of flat or boring, try subtle tweaks, even in the middle of editing, like when you're at the end of your edit or in the middle, try some subtle tweaks in your calibration and you might find that it gives that vibrance, that pop, that sharpness that you feel like you've been missing in your image. And that's the calibration panel, Lightroom's hidden editing secret or whatever, not really. But <laughs> try it on your next photo. Let me know how it goes. If you love it, please tag me. If you post on Instagram, I'll link it my Instagram right here so you can tag me. And then I definitely want to see what you created. So go ahead and hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Now, here's two videos that you should go check out that I think you'll enjoy. But make sure you also go check out my Lightroom Master of Editing course. I hope to see you in there. See you in the next video. It's like it's rewriting the DNA of your photo.